Today we're showcasing our battery laser welding machine. Uh, I'm going to run a quick demo for you. Uh, we developed that machine as a context, really uh, headed from R&D all the way to full phase production for the automotive energy storage system. Uh, today the demo is on the cylindrical cell, 21700. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to run it for you and at the end ask a couple of questions. Um, yeah, let's go on. So I'm going to open the machine. So what we're having uh, today is a mini module uh, made from, uh, like I mentioned earlier, 21700. I know it's quite far for you to see. Uh, the thing that uh, you will see in the machine, there's a video uh, all the way on top here also, and the interface is going to get you some information too, is uh, first, in the machine, we do a vision imaging of uh, an array of cell, all the way up to 400 by 400 millimeter. Uh, so we analyze that all zones and detect the cell's position. It's really important because we do need to offset the welding and the clamping position as uh, some of you that know, or I encourage you to come and have a closer look at those minimal after. The negative uh, remnant cell like this is about a millimeter, and we need to put a 0.5 millimeter well. So we do need to position it precisely. And in the real world, there's inherent manufacturing stack of tolerance, which is going to make, uh, or should you not correct the position, you could get that well, uh, either on the gasket or in the uh, peripheral of this. Uh, so I'm going to go. Put it in the machine. So first, for those of you who uh, have a view of the HMI, you will see we have captured the new module, and then the welding will start. Not that impressive with the TV because the clamping tool is hiding it, but we've just welded nine cells. The throughput full pace for 21700 is roughly 10 cells a second, 100 milliseconds per cell uh, during the welding. Uh, so the, both the clamping and the welding is offset as per the vision. And uh, that speed that I've just mentioned, about 10 cells a second, it's achieved by those four fast acting SCARA robots. So with that approach, Gonna wait for that cycle to finish. So with that approach, uh, we can keep, I would say, nearly the same speed we get from a global clamping by having the added benefit of the adaptable clamping, meaning that it adapts to every cell in precision, uh, but you keep the same speed. You don't lose speed with adding uh, the adaptability. This also make it really suitable for different module size, so it's only a software change should you have a smaller, bigger module, it's not multiple tooling, it's always the same tooling. Should you want to make like what we have in the machine right now, it's a 21700 cell tooling with a tip dedicated for 21700. So you have a different module, you would change the tip. In that machine there's four robot, it's four tip. So the cost of this compared to let's say a global retooling, much lower. You're making a different module, 4600 series, it's going to be a different tooling adapted for this. Same idea for a tip, but using same machine, same different type of cell. Then we go to Prismatic, we have a more simple tooling, I would say. There's less connection, so a circular hold down. But the, the general idea of the product is it's adaptable to multiple cell type uh, and module sizes with minimal retooling and maybe just reprogramming. So again, I encourage you to have a look at the module, maybe come to have a further demo for the question after, but that's the module we just welded. I'm going to take a couple more minutes just to showcase some software feature of the machine. So vision imaging is one thing, but in the cells and in the module manufacturing, the data is like what is important for quality. So we've developed, or our team uh, have developed uh, integrated software for multiple elements of the machine. One being the general data. So for every module created, we're recording all the 
and data. What does it mean? Is that's an example we record first uh, all the pressure. So there's a strain gauge for load cell and the tooling. So we do know every clamping pressure applied to every cell. Uh, we have the general data of the cell. All the detected are, are far from the nominal position it was, and all the process data <coughs> being the pressure, the uh, laser was it successfully fired, and the well quite uh, separately from the negative and positive well. Where that comes from, uh, for those who know, we use or, or know laser welding. We use a system from Presitec uh, called the LWM laser well monitoring. We embed this into the interface. Uh, trying to make that efficient for either development or ongoing um, tuning uh, during operation by the uh, engineer crew. Is that system look back at emitted light back from the process, uh, knowing that it's basically in the when we perform the well, there's light emitted, and that system look back at that light. Three different wavelengths plasma, the UV, temperature, the infrared, and the back reflection to the actual laser wavelength. Please come and have a more thorough explanation if you need. Uh, as a, a quick general overview, is a system that goes by training. We need to qualify the well, train the system, and then after that, can detect some bad well that are either like bad gap, some contamination, or the type of defect. Um, along with that, on the tooling, there's a, a, a tooling on the software, I mean. Uh, it's a laser welding machine, so we do have a laser software or dedicated software. It's also embedded in the interface. So I'm gonna just zoom for you. So this is one thing that yeah, is in the early stage of, uh, of the laser welding for a module. We will develop a weld and then move along all the way up to a final product on a module. It's embedded in the interface, so when that product is delivered to the client, they became owner of the uh, recipe that we are that we've developed can adapt it, you get training on this. It's not a, a, that company in the software, but typically we would give training to clients and it, it can be, or develop new welds, uh, fine tune parameters, everything is accessible in there. It's a machine, industrial machine, so we do have generic pages, I would say, on the ocean access gantries, the robot, and some machine peripherals. This is nothing out of the ordinary. And the uh, latest item I should mention is the calibration. Is uh, those type of machine with multiple system. If you don't have a ready to use calibration, it could be a, a big asshole to just replace the components or just the commissioning of it. Now we had machine at the show and in roughly around four hours, we had it uh, plugged in and calibrated. Meaning that we calibrated the vision system in the machine. We have the 3D stereoscopic vision. So we calibrated those two cameras and the same reference plane calibrated the robots in relation to this, the gantry, along with the laser, and all of that to achieve plus minus 100 micro precision on the cell. So it's, there's a bunch of routine in there. Don't want to go through all of this right now, but it's something that in real life production, when you're able to replace a component, for example, and be back up and running in a matter of minutes, you need to have those automated calibration routine that we, it's part of the product uh, as it is today. Globally, that machine, 800 by one meter, 800 by 1,000 millimeter uh, working bed. That's, I would say, one one size. But we, we've got a standard, but there's no problem. We should have longer module. Just It's the same concept, but we have a longer machine. We put more robot, bigger robot. And as the, I don't want to say the trend, but some 4600 series program go to sell to pack, then how do you fit that 1.5 by 2.5 meter or 2 point something meter? Mod pack. It's not in that machine. It's what we call an X large version. Think of this as we take the same hardware, but we, we put a big steel arch. We have still have a gantry, still a robot, but there'll be SR20s that you could see on the fan and cool right there. So much bigger robot, bigger reach. Uh, we'll put more robot if needed, but it's the same architecture. It would be an extension of the same software. So, as a product perspective, it's a scalable solution. You can bring it back to one robot or less robot to begin with. Less robot equals less speed. You add more robot, get back the speed. Along with the monitoring system, you can start without and add it after. That's a scalable solution and the versatile with the adaptable tool.